Hey everyone and welcome. In this video, we'll go step by step of JavaScript in React. So this will be our code. This side, on the left side, we'll have our code and our folder structure. This will this is just a basic boilerplate from React, and this will be our output. This is going to be an interesting session, so stay tuned. After this video, check out this awesome React projects on our channel. Also, follow us on Instagram. We have a special giveaway on 3000 followers. And don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Okay, so let's take a look at class and functional component. If we go to the code, this is what we call it as a functional component. This is a function, right? We can have a class based component, something like this. Cl uh, class, it starts with class app extends react dot component you can even have component something like this and you don't need to react here and the first method should be render render is something which shows anything on the screen and this should have a return and this return is going to be a HTML tag so welcome from class okay see so this is what we call it as a class component and this was our functional component okay okay so how to write an arrow function so we can convert this function into an arrow function by simply changing it to something like this const app is equal to uh, parenthesis and return h1 welcome from arrow function okay I'll just remove this and this should work fine welcome from arrow function so this is what we call of arrow function it's because this fat arrow and you can use this arrow function anywhere it's not just limited to components you can even have it inside of a small function Number three is template literals. So template literals are something which are enclosed by a backtick. So let's take a look at this example. In this one, we already have assigned a username, which is edurize. And this function, it returns you the username. So the standard way of doing it is hello space and you do a plus and use username. But sometimes it gets tedious when you have a lot of other names, let's say first name last name and bunch of different stuff so to make things simpler we use template literals and the format is something like this so you have a backtick start with the text which you want space and then this is how you write the template literal dollar curly bracket and your variable name so if you see now it's gonna show that this is hello edurize template literal so this is a template literal map reduce and filter okay so let's take a look at this example here we have a bunch of users and user has a name has a city and age okay so if we want to map through like map through means like go through each and every one we use a simple map something like this user dot map and individual user we return their name age and city something like this it's going to show you like this right so now what is a filter? So filter is simply going to give me based on if I have a condition, it's going to give me the result with which matches those condition. So I have a users dot filter. And if the user city is de role, it is going to give me those users. So it's going to find from the complete object and give me just two. It is supposed to give me two users. So let's take a look if it works and this does work, right? So what happens is you return a complete new array here with the required users and it is going to map through it. So filter is attached to a map. So after this, this is going to return an array and map is going to go through that array. Okay, so let's take a look at reduce. Reduce is something which gives you kind of an, kind of a total. So you can do something like this, users.reduce, this is an accumulator and this is a current value. And all we do is 
accumulator is we are setting it to zero. So this is our initial value. We can tell it, say something like that. And current value, and we keep adding the accumulator with the current value and current dot age. So this is what we care about. If we have something like city is going to add it to the string. Let's see, city. First of all, let's take a look at age. It is supposed to give you a number, which is a total of all the ages. If we do city, it's going to take like the whole thing. So starting with zero, it's going to take the whole a string of, no, of cities, which we have. So reduce, you might not use reduce and filter too much, but map is definitely you will be using. So what is var, let, and constant? So as you can see in this example, we have a variable which is single data and we called it, we assigned it zero. And if I do a set state of a single data, it is going to give me zero. And let's try with 10. Okay, so it's going to give me 10. Now, if I try to change, so first of all, var is something that is function scoped. It's scoped to this particular function. And let and constant, both of them are block scoped. Anything within curly brackets are block scoped. So let and constant are block scoped and var is like function scoped. Even if I define var inside of this block, it is going to give me 10, right? But now let's say if I change it to let, it is just available inside of this block. We cannot access it outside. So it's going to give me an error. And the same thing with constant. It is within this scope or within this block. So it's going to give me an error. Okay, so let's take a look at how to, this is still going to work, but let's try this. Let, and if I try to assign let or have a let variable inside as well, it will work, right? It's going to tell me that this, the, uh, see again, this is a block scope, so it doesn't matter if the value is 20. But if I change this to just, I'm just assigning it, it's going to change it to 20. Okay, so you cannot have var as a variable inside of a block scope because we already have defined single data as a let and for that reason we cannot have a var as 20. If you do this, it's going to throw an error. It's been already de uh, declared. Okay, let's take a look at the constant. If we have a constant variable and if I try to change it, it will give me an error saying that it is a constant variable and you cannot change it. So this is all you need to do is just to assign it and use it if you can. Okay, so this is about let var and constant. Import and export. So this is something we do in order to make our code cleaner and keep our functions smaller. So for this reason, I have already created a folder which is like a, called a do export. And what it does is, it exports a function, export default, and it exports this exported function. And we also have a named function which says like export constant exported function. And it says like exported from a named function. So let's take a look how are we going to import it. So if I go into our app.js, all you simply need to do is just import. And this is because we have a named function. We have a constant which is named, which has a name, right? So we have exported a constant and we import a constant something like this or either you can do uh, exported default one which is this and you can have a, any name which you want any name I can just name it anything and name and it's just going to give me exported function so which is an exported default one and you can even export a default constant so it kind of works in the same way async await so this is a way to handle promises when you are dealing with api so this is an example of dot then dot then when you get a result from an api which is a this is a dummy one so we can use it in a simpler way using async await and it is something like this so let raw data equal to fetch we fetch it something from here and we'll use await in the beginning and it's going to give you an error saying that await is supposed to go with async. Await outside an async 
function you cannot use that so for that reason you need to have a wait uh, async here and then the error is going to go away and now the thing is that you need to do the same procedure as you do here data.json and then you'll get a data something like this so let's do that okay let data equal to await raw data dot json and set employees we need to do the same thing as we do here set employees to data dot data so this was not a good way to write data dot data and that's why i called it call, uh, like fetched result but let's see we should get the same result and if i do a data dot reverse you'll see that something is going to change okay reverse is not a function because it's supposed to be data dot data and it is in a reverse order but now you'll see in the right order okay so this is how you use async await and you fetch things from api you can even use fetch dot then dot then but that's fine so how to use library in react so you can simply go to npm and pick a library which you want and you can simply install it with npm install and your library name a lot of npm every time it has the name and it gives you this function and to use it you can simply do it like import library function from the library package name something like this import this is a function which we this is a default one from xios okay so in the last example as we saw we are getting some result from the dummy api and we had to do a dot json stuff and a lot of other things if you use the dot then right but xios makes it simpler so you just do a xios dot get and this url and that's it it's going to give you the complete result though it has a data dot data but yes this is this is not because of xios or anything this is how the api is designed but right now we have used this and it is much cleaner than dot then dot then and even like dot json so this is how we use libraries in react what is destructuring so this is a way of making the code more readable so when we are passing props in react these are two separate functions which are comp functional components and we have a user object inside of app so i'm passing down this prop or this uh, value as a prop inside my child component and i'm accessing it through props right so this is what i get so i can simply break it down into like the same thing as detail details and now i don't need the props anymore i can simply use details and this should be good to go i'll have name age and job title i can even break it down something like this so const name age and i'll just name it as oh uh, i need to put it like details and name and this should work so this is how you get objects from like when it's nested too much and there's another way to destructure this as well saying something like name and age and you don't really need this so this should give you the same result as well but people don't go to this uh, two level nesting they simply go to one and then they use the constant like we did before so this is how we do the destructuring how to use spread operator in react so if you look at the example here we have a list of colors and orange blue and green and we need to add a new color to it so we have a function which is called add color and we call it after two seconds so let's try to call it and see what happens so we have three colors at the moment after two seconds we have brown so this uh, spread operator deserves a complete new video where we can go in depth because it has a lot of advantages and one advantage here is that react states are immutable so spread operator helps us achieve that so what is a ternary operator so a ternary operator is a conditional statement which you can use inside of this html block 
So the format is something like this. Here you have a condition, question mark, and if the condition is true, this should execute. If the condition is false, this should execute. Right now in the example, you can see we have is online true. It is going to execute this command. And you can even have a nested condition. Let's say is online again. And if the condition is true, nested true or else you will have nested false, right? So it is inside of this condition and it has a nested true because it is true. And if you have a completely new variable, something like nested equals to false. And if we check nested, it's going to give you a nested false because first condition is true, but the second condition is false. So this you'll use it for a lot of reasons in React. Okay, so I really appreciate the time that you guys are watching this. And if you guys have any question, don't forget to send us an email. The description you'll, contains the email address. And also like, comment, and subscribe to this channel. It does help us a lot. And follow us on Instagram. We post a lot of useful content on there. So. I'll stay tuned and I'll see you next time. Have a good one. Bye-bye.